Yeah, it's cash. Get him. DJ Deuce McGuire, this hot as a log fire. Spark the lighter in the 303. We wrestle at the quarry. Golden Colorado, Mercury Pro Wrestling Academy. Elevated wrestling, yeah. Hashtag follow if you know the motto. Can't stop now, got the need for speed. Combustion and concussion. Championships in my vision. I put the key in the ignition. Such an easy decision. I got a hustler's ambition. Wrestling at its best. Welcome to the show. I put on for Rocky Mountain Pro. Let's go. RMP Radio is back on the air. Hi, I am your host, Mr. Fourth Row, and joining me once again, I've got the Duke of the Downbeat, Cormac Battle. Cormac, how are you doing? I am good, man. It's so good to talk to another person for the first time in, like, months. This is good. Human connection is sorely missed. <laughs> I uh, I hear you there. Uh, so, hey, uh, before we get uh, talking to the, by the meat of the uh, discussion that we're going to have, uh, let's talk about some uh, fun, fantastic news that we've had in the uh, Rocky Mountain Pro uh, community, and that is our girl uh, Abaddon making her... Uh, AEW uh, Dynamite uh, debut. Uh, how'd that uh, hit you when that happened? Uh, it's in, Well, so, you know, it's one of those deals where uh, I know you saw her um, when she wrestled on Dark a few right. months back. was here in Colorado. And that's one of those deals where um, I remember some friends and I were texting when that happened, me and some of my buddies, and one of them texted me and said, you know, that's a performance, that sort of match and that sort of energy and that sort of reaction – is a performance that makes a major wrestling company say, we need to have this person in our fold. Mm -hmm. And so as happy as we are for her that it happened, it's also a situation where we're not surprised at all. It's just one of those deals where she's worked too hard, she's too talented, she's too good a person for stuff not to just line up for her sooner than later. So, you know, we're so, so, so proud of her. It's so awesome. I'm so happy to see the positive reaction she's gotten from fans and from wrestlers and from People in and outside of the community of Colorado, it's awesome. It really is great to see. Yeah, and uh, piggybacking of kind of what you uh, said and maybe to expand on that, when we had that, uh, you were there and I was there, that uh, that AEW Dark and that arena, the uh, uh, the uh, First Bank Center, the mm-hmm. Eat Her Soul chants were for a, 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 an enhancement talent per se. They were booming in there. Everybody knew who she was, and like you said, I think AEW took notice. Absolutely, and and to your point, like to have you know a lot of times you'll see um, talent that are you know sort of uh, locals get pretty good reactions. But I mean, that was a reaction from somebody that is a national TV star. I mean, you would never have known if you were just watching that show. Obviously, if you're in Colorado, you know what's up. But if you were just watching that show on YouTube, you're watching Dark. However many weeks later, when it finally aired. That's a reaction that you that you see and you hear and you go, man, okay, so this person's already somebody. Like I already know that AEW's had their eye on this girl because she's getting a massive reaction despite me personally never having seen her before. And so it's situations like that where it's almost like a no-brainer. Like, yeah, of course we have to bring her in because if she can get this kind of reaction from a crowd that doesn't necessarily know her, imagine the reaction she'll get on a national TV audience that – you know, they can build behind her and they can really, obviously, you know, crowds aren't what they are now, but in general, like she's the kind of person that can get a reaction anywhere, Colorado or anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. And, uh, you know, and, and, and then just the match that she had, uh, you know, it just was, they made both each other, uh, look so good. And now, um, here, Kirishita is the champ, you know? Mm-hmm. Is it, I mean, that's crazy how how things evolved from uh, way back on March. Yep. I mean, not to like pull back the curtain too much, but that yeah. it, like literally, I don't even know how better to say it than you just did. But yeah, that's one that's one of those matches where you watch you're like, okay, this is very much not a match where you know it's just one of those deals. All right, let's just fill some time. This is a match where there's two people who the crowd is invested in both of them, mm-hmm. and they both want to be seen as leg- legitimate competitors. And both of them came out looking like absolute badasses, like must-see TV. Right, yeah, it was very, very true. Uh, so let me ask you this. Uh, if we're going we're gonna to rewind a little bit even before uh, March, uh, before uh, the, you know, Rocky Mountain Pro was having uh, shows and stuff like that, yep. and 
Uh, people, if you guys uh, haven't seen this, you weren't attended in person, or if you didn't catch it or catch it again, uh, go back on uh, Rocky Mountain Pro's uh, uh, Twitch account and look up a lot of the uh, pre the shows that we had before uh, March and all this happened, and you will see Abaddon getting in the ring with a lot of the uh, male competitors in Rocky Mountain Pro. And including uh, yourself, you got in there with her. Uh, did mm -hmm. you have any uh, idea that this was uh, going to be happening uh, when you were getting in there? Or was it, or is it just more of um, it's Abaddon? You know, Abaddon could take on anybody. Yeah, so terrifying experience, obviously. <laughs> uh, you know, it really is one of those deals where you know you're you're sitting there in the middle of the ring, or you're standing in the middle of the ring, and the music hits and the lights go down, and she comes out, and the liquid the the sludge is falling out of her mouth and the lights are flashing green and you're just like man like i really should have you know made some different choices in life but, <laughs> but no so abaddon's one of those people where and i'm actually a huge proponent of intergender wrestling in general mm -hmm. and i think that abaddon is a perfect example of why it's so successful or why it can be so successful because you have a character or you have a persona like abaddon and I know a lot of people say their biggest beef with intergender wrestling is that it's not, you know, necessarily believable. Mm -hmm. And you look at Abaddon, you go, what about this is not believable? Like, she is as close to being an actual living dead girl zombie as anything we've ever seen in comics or movies or TV or whatever. And so when you have somebody like Abaddon wrestling guys, I don't even see it as, you know, intergender wrestling so much as I see it as, like, one guy trying to survive the experience, which I, you know, was able to barely, barely, barely. But yeah, that's really the way I look at it. Is it's like it's less, it's almost like less an athletic competition, more of a fight for survival. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And you know, and additionally to expand on uh, what you talked about, the intergender wrestling, uh, one of a uh, Rocky Mountain Pro's uh, uh, sister companies, uh, Lucha Libre and Laughs, uh, had a, a whole weekend that was a intergender. Uh, tag team uh, yes. tournament, yes. and I I attended that, and uh, they, they did well. The the pairings were great, and and it it approved to the point that it can be uh, done well, especially when um, you've got uh, people that of course know each other real well. Because like mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, um, Aligato teamed up with Anaya, yep. and and then we had you know the eventual winners of uh, Caleb. Crush and Delia Doom uh, that didn't necessarily know, and I talked to Caleb about this, didn't yeah. necessarily know each other and worked with each other, and they did real well because they're professionals and they're damn good. Yes. You know, uh, Caleb Crush, just shout out real quick, is not a guy that wrestles very often, yeah. but he's absolutely one of those guys in my mind that, like, if he were ever to be given an opportunity, I think that there's a really good chance that a guy like Caleb Crush could be on national TV every single week, but uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. to your point, like it's so much fun watching intergender, inter, yeah, intergender wrestling um, for that reason because you get to see these tag teams and you get to see, or even just these dream matches that you otherwise wouldn't. Like you just said, the pairing of Delilah Doom and Caleb Crush, who, you know, taking them purely at face value, you'd think, okay, well, they couldn't possibly be more different. The original odd couple, right? And like yeah. they can't possibly work together. And then, no, they actually can very well because like you say they're both incredible wrestlers and they end up winning this whole tournament despite having met each other probably a handful of times if that prior to that night right and you get to see these incredible dream matchups that one would not necessarily have thought of prior like delilah and caleb versus anaya and ali where you know we've seen delilah versus ali and caleb versus anaya but to put them all together at the same time running in and out of the ring and you know there being this sort of different aura around it. I think it's an entirely unique experience that you can't find unless you're willing to sort of, I hate to say, the I hate to say take a chance, but really kind of take a chance on intergender wrestling. Right. Yeah. And you know, and, and let's, um, because of how, how crazy, uh, 2020 is being right now and the world, every seems like every time we, uh, turn around and I know you've probably seen the, the meme on it where it's, where it's like, okay, who had, uh, uh, murder hornets for alien invasion for July, you know, that, that kind of thing. And, you know, specifically talking about wrestling and, and speaking out and, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about, cause we don't, we don't really pull any punches here on uh sure. RMP radio. Um, do you think it's going to be tougher for promotions to be able to maybe, 
um, pull this out because um, let's just face it, you know, women may be a little leery to work with somebody they may not know very well. Sure. I think it's a, I think that's a perfectly legitimate um, question to ask. I really think it's one of those situations where it totally depends on the comfortability of the uh, performer. I really think that there's going to be women that are going to be totally fine with it. And it's been, you know, I'm a sneeze. Uh, yeah. Gosh. Okay. That's going to be a, th- a problem. Um, so anyway, um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, it is, it's scary, you know, because I think it's one of those situations where it, like, I guess that's really the best way to describe it. Is it really going to depend on the comfortability of the person? I think that obviously somebody who works at Rocky Mountain Pro, such as say an Abaddon or such as a Ronnie Winter or, you know, whoever, Heidi Howitzer, they're used to us and they're used to the guys that she has, you know, spent some time with prior. Right. If it's somebody like you're saying that, that she's never met or, and again, it's, you know, I'm not, I want to speak for them, but right. I can totally understand why someone might have some apprehension for potentially working a match with or even sharing a locker room with someone they've never met just because of the amount of unfortunate stories we've heard over the last, you know, week and a half or so. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's, and, it, and, and, and my heart goes out to them and I, and I know that we've had, um, uh, many, um, Rocky mountain pro, um, uh, people that have trained with Rocky mountain pro have had, they've uh, said a few things. I mean, uh, um, uh, about, Nothing with Rocky Mountain Pro, but just other weird things that have kind of happened on their uh, pro wrestling journey. Sure. And um, and I mean, I, I like I said, my heart goes out with it. I think uh, Ali had said something that she got some kind of um, uh, weird comment, something about you know you've got a girlfriend body and not a wrestler body or something to that effect. I don't know if you saw that. And yeah. I just was like, that's such a. That, even though I understand, I. I, I mean, I kind of get what maybe that person was saying, but still, shut the fuck up, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't, I don't cuss very much. That that mm-hmm. that, that person should have just not said anything. And if he was there to support uh, uh, a, a talent, he should like go out there and kick some ass in the ring tonight, you know. Nothing, yes. nothing like that. It just it's, I think it's sucky. Part of it comes down, and there's a there's many, many, many different facets to this. So. I don't want to tri- I don't want to you know break it down to one specific aspect of it, but specifically right. for the fan side of it, I think it's really important to remember for a lot of fans, um, and I think you're a really good example of this actually. Where, you know, I think it's totally fine to boo the bad guys and cheer the good guys, right? That's what we want. We want to hear the crowd interact. We are all about getting the fans to make noise and everything. I, and I totally, totally support all that. But I do think it's also critically important for fans to realize. At the end of the day, these are, these are still people. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as athletes, right? Athletes at a basketball game. You can boo the Utah Jazz all you want, absolutely. But if you say something that's out of line about their character or about their body or about the you know way they live their life, then you've gone beyond the restrictions of being just a fan at a show or at a game, and you're actually into the territory of being potentially right a bigot or just a jerk in general. And so while I think it's totally fine for fans to say something like, you know, you suck, you're an asshole, whatever, that's all well and good. When you get into their, for instance, personal appearance, especially when it comes to women's wrestling, yeah. I think that that's pretty inexcusable personally. I think um, I think it's really lowbrow and low rent. And, uh, you know, we think we get past it. And then you hear stories like that and it's like, no, we still have, you know, a lot of work to do. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's so true. And. Uh, you know, and I, I forget what exactly I put out there, but I put out there something about, you know, uh, being a, being a, something to the effect about being a good fan is, you know, you're, you're going to have your favorites and you're, you're going to have your, your not so favorites, but you should at least respect, uh, the person as a, uh, a pro wrestler and an athlete, mm-hmm. um, n- no matter what, you know, mm-hmm. and, it, and it, you know, you know, very cordial, you know, with, uh, you know, if you get get on the end like you know, like uh, like I am, um, you know, I, I I feel I feel like you know you've you've called me the ambassador of, and uh, and I appreciate that, and I yeah. I, I uh, try to do the best I I can when I can. and it's and it's, so it's great because um, there's a lot of times that people just they come up to me when I'm just like busy doing something else and just you know you know giving me a, a high five or a handshake uh, you know. 
pre-virus days and and that kind of stuff and now it's more the wave hey how you doing that kind yeah. of stuff so so you you can be uh, you can't you can as a fan you can be you can play your part when the wrestling is happening but you still need but after that's out and we're going to break uh, Kfa break the fourth wall. You need to be a good person, as uh, sure. as uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 Make a Wish uh, uh, kind of uh, tells us to do. <laughs> yes, absolutely, it's true, man. Like, and that's why. And I think again, not to get it too you know far into it, the personal side of it, but like I think that's why people like you are given the opportunities that they're given to come kind of hang behind the curtain, or whatever, because you've proven yourself to be a guy that is very obviously knowledgeable of the wrestling scene, especially in this state, very supportive of the scene, very cool about it, but not to the point that you're, you know, getting too involved that you feel like you're, you know, able to take these pot shots. You're still respectful. You still, you know, boo the bad guys, whatever. You have fun at the shows, but still being respectful on a human, human level where you say, you know what, like at the end of the day, it's a show. Uh, everyone's here to have fun and to, you know, have a good time. And so when you take it, not you, but you know, when someone takes it right. to another level that is no longer potentially safe or uh, respectful, then you know that's the kind of thing we have to get better about. Sometimes, I mean, I know you've been to some of these bar shows where you can get a little bit rowdy, and you run in situations that might not be cool. And I think we, as a community in well, Colorado wrestling, but definitely just wrestling in general, like yeah. have to get better about that and really kind of recognize: okay, is this situation still safe and still you know okay for everybody involved? Fans and wrestlers, right. and and that's both ways, right? I would say this as well. If you're a wrestler who is not able to respect those boundaries as well, you probably should not be wrestling, or at least you should probably go back to school and kind of figure out, you know, what the values are and what you're about, because you'll see these clips of wrestlers sort of taking liberties with fans almost, yeah. and that's also not okay, of course. I like to think that we're pretty good good about that in this state, but you never know. Right. Yeah, I think I th- I th- I think we are. And uh I wanted to say something to the uh the human part. And sometimes and I've admitted this on uh, uh, a previous episode that uh uh the uh when uh, AEW was here and it was AEW Dark and uh Severino Corrente came out. And yes. I, and I started cheering and cuz that was the human part of me going, this is somebody I know. This is a, somebody I consider a friend and here he is on this stage and I'm like then I went, oh shit! I've got to boo him because he's a yes, bad guy. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's just—it's funny how how uh, sometimes uh, just uh, instinct uh you things happen. But in in this aspect, it was a it was a, a very good and positive thing. Totally. It really is kind of like one of those things you have to catch yourself in the moment because I'm the exact same. I was literally the exact same way when Corrente came out. It was very much the moment of like, hell yeah, this is so awesome. My friend's getting an opportunity, followed by, oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, you suck, Corrente. Kick his ass, <laughs> havoc type deal. No, that was the exact same reaction I had. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. All right, and we are going to take a short break. Uh, we're going to have a very special guest uh, join us here in just a moment. All right, and we are back. Uh, uh, Cormac and myself are joined uh, by one of my uh, good friends. He is the host of the uh, 69th Best uh, Chicago Cubs podcast in the universe, uh, Danny Rocket. Danny, how are you doing? I am I'm doing great. You know, I just I rode my bike out to the Bohemian National Cemetery on the northwest side northwest side of Chicago today. Nice. Had a lovely afternoon with my mother. Went to the Cubs fan burial wall, which is in quite a bit of disrepair. You'll hear that on the next Sunranto show and some pictures I took of it already. And um, anyway, I had a very nice day. It's a beautiful day here in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, just finished eating some tacos. And uh, you know what could be wrong. Yeah, very, very true. So, uh, so uh, first question I'm going to ask uh, of you, Danny, um, uh, how does it feel to be on a, uh, a wrestling podcast, per se? <laughs> well, it's all come full circle now, because I was just telling you before you press record that, like, as a kid, it was the heyday of, like, your Hulk Hogan's and your Andre the Giants and your Ricky the Dragons and your Kamala's and 
Leaping Lenny Poffos, and we used to always do battle royals in my front yard yeah. uh, and tear up my grass, and to, then the neighbor would come out and yell at us for being too loud, and his wife was sleeping and all this crap. But we used to always play, and we wrestled a lot as kids. We watched all that stuff. I fell out of paying attention to it in a, you know, in you know later years and stuff. Once I discovered girls, and I was like, I don't want to look at men in their underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look at girls in their underwear. So, but that's just me. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. But uh, anyway, it's coming full circle. To answer your question more concisely, I feel like I'm returning to my 11th year on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, so I asked you on uh, because uh, here on. Um, uh, RMP Radio, we kind of talk a little bit more beyond the wrestler and get to kind of know about the wrestlers or what they kind of do outside of the, the wrestling ring. And uh, Cormac, uh, as myself, uh, and of course you, Danny, uh, we're all uh, big uh, baseball fans. And the first thing we were going to talk about, and I know you uh, discussed it on the uh, San Ranto show, but uh, Long Gone Summer, the recent uh, uh, ESPN uh, documentary that uh, aired uh, a little while ago. Uh, Cormac, we'll start with you. Um, what did you uh, think of the, uh, of the uh, Long Gone Summer? You know, it's interesting because I, uh, I remember when I was a kid, because that's kind of when I started getting involved with uh, watching baseball, my dad was during the home run derby, right, with, with Sosa and McGuire and everything. And so it's really interesting because I was, you know, 98, so I was like five, right, six years old, and I like barely even knew what baseball was. And so to um, to go back and like see it all, like now that I'm an adult and kind of watch it all back was awesome. Like, it was so cool to just kind of get that new view on it because I didn't really know what was going on back then. My dad was obviously freaking out about it. But uh, but to see it all and kind of take all the context in it, too, was really cool. And it's a totally different perspective now that I have such a deeper appreciation for the game in general. Um, I loved it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was a really, really fun were, deal. For were you go. a Cubs no. fan then, Cormac? So, uh, or a Cardinals I, fan, or like, or were you not invested in Cardinals that? Cardinals fan, don't you dare, brothers. <laughs> I grew up in uh, Evanston, so okay. I should have been a Cubs fan. And we did go see the Cubs, but my father grew up on the South Side, so I was a Sox fan. Right on. So same as my mother. Yeah, grew up a Sox fan, but she's now sw- switched her allegiances. Totally. Always Sox over Cubs, but it was cool to see them win it in '16. Right. Yeah. And uh, and Danny. Um, any uh, thing that you things you've thought about uh, since uh, recording the uh, episode for for your podcast? And I kind of left that. I you know I kind of left that documentary in the dust. It yeah. really <laughs> did seem like a big long commercial for Mark McGuire to get into the Hall of Fame. Right. That's true. <laughs> and <laughs> and like and I really wish they would have spent more time with Sammy Sosa because he's a really interesting guy, and he's from a. a completely different background that I think most people who are Americans and uh, sports fans don't understand, you know, that, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, he's from the Dominican, he was poor, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think they know exactly what that means uh, about, you know, who, how that made him who he is, you know, why he has such an eccentric and lavish lifestyle now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and oh, I mean, the dude like hangs out with like Dubai princes right now. Like mm-hmm. he's got cool art on his wall. He's got you know, little pink hats he wears and he has got wild suits. I mean, and then we're supposed to look at like Mr. Like scrote face, uh, <laughs> it, it, Mark McGuire with his gigantic forearms and like the American boy and wish he was going to be in the hall of fame. It's like, dude, no, Sammy is the exciting one of the mm-hmm. you two. Like, and they've barely spent any time on him. And granted, I'm biased as a Cubs fan that I want more Sammy. But, like, we've been deprived of Sammy and his eccentricity if that's very entertaining for far too long. You know, it's just like this is supposed to be the entertainment business. You know there's a wrestling podcast. Yeah. Like, yep. even even if he's the foil, you know, fine. You know, like, l- love to hate him. I hated McGuire more after that. You know, I wanted more Sammy. So, um, you know, it was, you know, obviously well done, except for, well, except for some obvious glaring, uh, you know, kind of, I, I, I won't call them errors because it was obviously purposeful, mm-hmm. uh, maybe just overlooking using modern shots of Wrigley Field. Yeah. Uh, super weird. When we're, it was super weird. Yeah. Just like, what? 
Because, like, we kind of want to see old ballparks in their old way. And, oh, I remember when the seats were like that. Remember when they had those big block TVs? And, you know, yep. that kind of thing is what you want to see. You know what? You know, things change over the years. It, it would the top it, the strange. across the street and watch the game from over there? Sorry, g- come again? Go uh, to the top floor of the apartments across the street and watch the games from uh, on top of the roof up there. My father used to do that when I was growing up. Oh, yeah. And then that's before they sold it. Yes. You know, th- those were just dudes in lawn chairs and a six pack and a grill. And, you know, the shirts off all summer long. They just rented an apartment in there, you know, probably p- paid an extra hundred bucks. And you got to be in there with your buddies all summer. Yeah. And uh, that's before, you know, it was corporate owned and uh, actually first individually owned by you know, individual owners. And then after now it's just owned by the Cubs all right. but one or two, which to your point is like the cool little eccentricity is the old school ballparks that you just will not get anymore. Like it's just, it's a dead, it's a dead concept. Don't they? I mean, it seems like they've tried it at other places to recreate that. I know that the Cardinals have that ballpark village where they built like kind of fake you, you ever been to las vegas and then you go to new york new york and they try to like recreate like the village you know kind of thing in, in sure. a casino i mean that's what cardinals ballpark village is like for the wrigley field rooftops it's just like yeah no, no <laughs> it's, it's, but yeah it's it's the fake version of the real thing you know it oh, sounds right. artificial uh, or looks artificial and um and yeah I, I i would i i would say that after seeing and and I was not a basketball fan. I mean, I grew up in the Michael Jordan era, uh, and I didn't even care then, mm. even though everybody was into it. I just basketball wasn't my thing. It never caught on with me. So, uh, but I did enjoy some of the Last Dance, and I could see what a well-made documentary that was. Right. And you know, I and just to see, I, I'm like, how did this let uh, this uh, what it, was it called? Long boring summer. What was it? <laughs> It was like, and it was like two hours long. Like I thought it was only gonna be an hour, and an hour in, I was like, "Oh my god, this thing's still going!" You gotta be kidding me! There's another freaking hour of this of Mark McGuire sitting in a chair. <laughs> oh god, so so <laughs> true. Kill me. Yeah. Amazing. You know, and then you know, it's um, it's funny because I almost feel like it's released at a really weird time because before this week. Uh, if uh, the uh, 2020 season isn't go- wasn't going to happen, it's like, well, are we going to have to have another 1998 to get baseball running again? I mean, mm. what do you think about that? <laughs> well, the question is, what will it be? Because yeah. last time it was steroids. I mean, what do we do now? Just like speed balls, like, you know, just get every- give everybody lines of cocaine and a bunch of steroids. It's just like up the ante. Uh, move in the fences, you know, just dogs everywhere. I don't know. Give it an, an all an all drug league, possibly. I don't know. Um, yeah. What what would I mean? They're always obviously tinkering with the game. Um, the this negotiation thing. I don't know how you feel about it. Already, you and I haven't talked about it, and I just I just met you, Carmack. Yeah. So, uh, like, how I mean, how bad of a taste do you guys have in your mouths? about the negotiations that just went on between the players and the owners through Rob Manfred, the man who hates baseball. Well, Arnie, you go first because I'm going to rant about this. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and I told, and I did, Danny, I did tell you that, uh, it is the son ranto ranter. So he's, uh, he's ready and raring to go. I, I got I mean, him. Yeah. I got him as a good, uh, as a good manager, wrestling manager. I got him prepped and ready to go. Uh, Come on. <laughs> but I, Danny, I totally agree with you. I mean, they had Fourth of July wrapped up in a red, white, and uh, blue bow to get baseball <laughs> going, and they just totally messed up on getting that going because that's Americana, apple pie, like you said, and fireworks. Even though, you know, fireworks are illegal in some places, but you know, I just was like, oh, but you know, at least they got something going. Um, it's kind of weird things, but I'm kind of glad to, and I'm excited to see. But my biggest concern is. Are we going to be able to watch a lot of this stuff on TV uh, like we normally would eat without getting an MLB at bat subscription and all that kind of stuff like that? Well, you probably will, but, you know, maybe they'll make it, you know, 30 bucks or something instead right. of the 150 that it normally is. But I mean, they should just, I don't think that they, they're so out of touch. 
that they don't feel like they've lost any goodwill. They're like, ah, these freaking idiot zombies, these sheeple. They'll they'll come back to us. Like they don't care. We don't need a home run derby. It hasn't been, been that long. They've been through a coronavirus. You know, they're gonna be itching for it, you know. And they're partly they're very much right. And I think a lot of people do want to stay positive about it, but you know, uh, you know, I'm disappointed that they couldn't get it done. But Mac, like you said, you're gonna rant about it. Like you're you are one of those really kind of edged out people. Yeah. yeah, you know, I tell you what, I am I, I love basically all sports. I love basketball, I love football, I love hockey, love baseball, love baseball. Have loved it for the last like 15 years. My dad got me involved, who his dad got him involved, who his dad, you know what I'm saying, all the way back to the 1860s or whatever. And, you know, I swear to God, maybe I'm overreacting and you can tell me if I am, but like there's no sport I think right now that I am more knowledgeable about that so actively wants me to stop watching. Mm. I think that the the negotiations, obviously, this is no news to hear that it's been an absolute debacle. It's been a joke. It's been terrible since the start. Uh, I think that there are definitely some parts of it that are on the players, but I do largely think it's on the owners for many reasons. I think that this new idea of starting the season for 60 games, like I already said, that you might not even be able to watch is trash. I hate MLB at bat. I hate blacking out games. I think it's terrible. I'm, I live in Colorado. I can watch the Rockies games on cable, but I also want to watch the White Sox and the Cubs, and I just want to watch baseball in general. I want to watch the Mariners play the, you know, Braves. I don't know why I would, but, you know, I do. Uh, and, and I just can't, and it's it's brutal to me, and it's just like they're doing everything they possibly can to run to run off the casual fans. Uh, like you said, Dan, I think you made a good point. Like I think you're right that they're not going to lose any of their hardcore fans because why would they? They're so starved for baseball, they just want to watch whatever's going to be on TV. But if you're a casual fan kind of considering, well, you know, every other sport's gone, maybe I'll watch baseball. Not only do you have to learn the rules of baseball, which, you know, fair enough, are the worst things in the world to learn, but now you've got all these other new rule changes. The DH is now in the National League, which I don't know how you feel about that as a Cubs fan, but I don't know. I don't love it, but I already made my peace with it a long time ago. But now you've got the, the runner on second base to start extras. You've got the three. Which back- nobody likes. I have not met it's one awful. person who likes it. And it's they're like, they're like, no, let's do it. It's good. And we're like, we hate it. They're like, no, it's good. We're like, no, it freaking sucks. Stop. <laughs> it's so it, like, so I'm all about innovation. I think you should look at things. Replay, I thought was a great idea. Sure, whatever. But you're doing this, that and the three battle roll, to me, so badly mess with the actual foundation of the strategy of the game. It's like creating a new sport. The XFL had all these different rules than the NFL. That's okay. They're the XFL. They're not the NFL. They're playing a different style of football. Just call it something else because it's not baseball anymore. The three battle rule kills any kind of late game strategy. You just throw a guy out there, whoever you think has the best chance. Forget lefty specialists. Forget guys that have good history against each other. That doesn't matter anymore. You just want a guy that you think might do the best. And if he gets matched up poorly, well, okay, tough, whatever. I don't know if I'm supposed to swear in here or not. But uh, And then like you said, I have not met a single person in person, over the phone, online, anywhere that likes the, the, the run, run on second base. I don't know where they thought that was a good idea. That's brutal. That one's a really, really, really rough one. And I and I have to chime in on that because I, I Mac, I told you before we got uh, Danny on. It's very funny because uh, I used to play in a, a kickball league that when we did go to extra innings, we did get the sec- the runner on second um, for for kickball. So I'm just like, mm-hmm. wow, this is a uh, very, very strange. Well, which now, like- see, now that would be interesting. Now let's say, okay, it's ex- it's uh, tied after nine. Now you put the runner on second, and then everybody has to play kickball. Now that <laughs> yeah. I'd be about. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and absolutely. Run, entertain me. And and run and run the other way. Yeah. And yeah. Run backwards. Hey, you used to be able to. Those used to be old baseball rules. You could you could run either way. You could run down to third base if you wanted to. Right. And yeah. get the get it running that way. That would be <laughs> total chaos. I would love it. Bring that back. Yeah. So yeah, very true. Uh, um, other than um, other than that, I mean, any of the uh, uh, things that they got going for uh, 2020 season uh, that have kind of stood out uh, that are just uh, good, strange, and different. Uh, you know, of course, we've had a few players, uh, you know, test positive for uh, COVID-19 over the last few days. Uh, Rockies, Rockies players, Phillies players, Blue Jays. 
I believe there were some twins. Uh, I, uh, it hasn't gotten out there, but there have been people in the Cubs organization that yeah. I've been told uh, through, like, whisper, whisper, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, that shouldn't shock anybody. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, you got dudes coming in from different countries with various and different states with various uh, regulations, uh, different regulations. I think, uh, you know, I don't think anything but will be or or have been surprised when during a pandemic, some of your players are going to get the disease that is pandemicking. Mm. But uh, but, uh, you know, it's how they handle that during a season through quarantine and isolation, which means we're going to get chaos Mm -hmm. because people are going to test positive. You might lose your best player. You know, a game out of first place, uh, like an injury, like a week, right. uh, you know, two days before the season ends. And you're like, oh, man, we win these two. And then, you know, you lose Anthony Rizzo to Corona. Yeah. You know what I mean? It could happen. And that's the world we're living in. We, You know, and uh, sorry if I just put that out, Anthony Rizzo, because now if he's the guy. <laughs> Knock on wood. Knock yeah, on wood. Not, I don't have anything wood next to me. I'm. I, I, does composite count? I have a composite that, you know. <laughs> But, um, you know, but it's just it, it's going to be wacky and wild, I think, in that way. Uh, I, I it's I to be honest, I don't even know if they're even going to start a season like I yeah. might really I know a lot of people are excited and I hate to like, you know, throw the, the wet the wet blanket on it. But like they've got to get through the next month without like it, you know, some kind of Corona disaster. Right. Which, uh, you know. And then they got to get through two more months of a season and half the people will go home or a third or two thirds. And then uh, then the other teams will battle out. And then you just got to get through, uh, you know, four months of time still Mm. in the middle of a pandemic. And so I'm looking at that and I'm like, well, (laughs) you know, I don't I don't want to be negative about it. It's just that, you know, pandemic. Well, Danny, uh, keep me honest here. Can't players just choose to cop out for the season and not play? Yeah, and I think you'll see some of that too. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, Chris Bryant has a new newborn. I yes. know Bryce Harper has a either a pregnant wife or a newborn. Uh, Which I'm saying this right before we came on too. Yeah, and so you know, and I don't blame any of them because there are more important things going on, and you're gonna have a lot of those people out there. Oh, uh, these wusses. Uh, who do they think they are? You know, they oh. get pay, paid millions and millions of dollars to play a chess game. And they'll say that. And then you'd be like, buddy, there's a pandemic. They have a family. They have people that depend on them. Mm-hmm. They have a career ahead of them. Mm-hmm. They don't need the money. Mm-hmm. You know what? If I was a millionaire, I wouldn't work either. So, you know what? For for who? For Joe Sixpack? Socially distancing in the stands, yelling as <laughs> TV. Like, for who? For you? No. Kid, you kidding me? Get out of here. You know, so like they'll be painted as a prima donna, but it doesn't matter because they'll be in their gated communities with tons of money and their family who actually loves them. Yeah, so, cry always bank, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know what? There's half of us that'll be like, good. They did the responsible thing for humanity and themselves. They understood there are things bigger than playing what is actually a child's game that you yeah. get paid millions of dollars for. Yeah. And they were like, I don't care about the money. I care about my health and my family. Yes. And you know what? That is exactly the right way to think about life. Mm-hmm. I, I just I really worry that there's going to be sort of a fallout from this that is almost going to be because, you know, let's say the season goes off without a hitch. Let's say it all goes to according to whatever plan the man that hates baseball has like, what's the best case scenario out of this? The players all come back and go, well, that went okay, I guess. Well, let's just forget about the months of arguing back and forth and the months of frankly disrespect that we felt. Don't you think it's still at least somewhat likely that they're going to have to have another serious talk about this following the end of the season that could, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but we could almost have like a strike situation. No. Oh yeah. I think we could. Well, I mean, it's where everybody's pretending that the coronavirus pandemic is going to be over by next spring, but I don't see any evidence of that per- you know, personally, <laughs> at least not by what's going on. Sure. I, I mean, unless we start going to play baseball in Europe, which they won't even let us in anymore. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot going on. And so I think you're going to see the wildest offseason 
that you've ever seen. If we even get, I mean, which might start, I don't know, in a week. You know, like yeah. I, you know, I really hope not. I do hope that they can get to some games, just because I, I think if they were really smart, which they're not, so that's why I don't have a lot of hope. But <laughs> if they were really smart, they could pull it off. Like you know, people are going to Jewel, they're going to the grocery store. You know, they're they're doing things, still spreading around. I'm not saying you know they're because not everybody's smart about it. And I don't know, obviously, the protocols or lack thereof that have been put into place so far sure. are not working because player after player has uh, contacted coronavirus. And now, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but now, I mean, who, they, they're being very secretive about who that is. But we're going to very much know who it is <laughs> once the season starts. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, when- after in five more days, six more days. Right. Yeah, we're gonna know everybody that gets it. Yeah, the moment <laughs> they don't show up, they got the Rona, and mm-hmm. you gotta wonder too. Like David Ross, beginning of February, yeah. so sick, missed his uh, managerial debut in right. spring training. I totally forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, you know, Rona. Mm. I'm just saying. Like, I mean, so maybe they, you know, he's got the antibodies. Uh, you know, some of them might have already had it, and you kind of. Not that you want anybody to have it, but you'd want somebody to have a mild case and some antibodies right now. I'm, I'm going off on a rail, but it's going to go all ways because there's this X factor that's going to permeate this entire season, The and it's going to be wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I almost think that – and like I said, I sound like a total conspiracy theorist, but I almost think that they have to have this mini season, whatever. They have to have this go well because you think about what's baseball been over the last calendar year? You've had the Rona. Okay, fair enough. They couldn't probably have predicted for that, maybe. But you have the huge scandal with the Astros, which turned at least some people off to the sport entirely, or at least uh, killed any sort of goodwill they had with it. You have the complete mismanagement by the commissioner, who has said some stuff that is like terrifying to hear from the uh, head office of the league saying things like the the World Series trophy is a hunk of metal and things like that. Mm -hmm. You've got this constant back and forth between the players and the owners, clearly not on the same page. You worry about guys like, for instance, in the case of the Rockies here, you've got a guy like Nolan Arenado, who is this one of the greatest players to ever play at his position, maybe ever, who has already had some weirdness with the front office. Now he's got his issues with the uh, uh, office of the commissioner, you wonder if maybe this is a situation where it's almost like a make or break for baseball to continue to survive. Again, I, I know it sounds kind of like gravitas almost, but that's almost how I look at it with everything going on for them. Yeah, and it, 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 it's so true. And um, you know, and you know, I, I'm a big Star Trek fan, and it's funny because they've mentioned baseball specifically in uh, the Deep Space Nine series that baseball died basically, and mm. so it's like. Is Star, Trek, is Star Trek right? Is Star Trek going to be right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably. I mean, to be honest, like, I mean, I I talk about baseball all the time. I got to, you know, already listen to my podcast about baseball. I do a TV show about baseball. I sing songs about baseball. I've, <laughs> you know, it's been years and years and years of loving baseball. Baseball is one of the reasons I even live in Chicago right now. And, uh, you know, and I must say, they have tried my patience to the point where I could give kind of a rat's ass about how they burn it down. But because I'm going to sit here and fiddle while it burns <laughs> and, and and I'm going to be entertained by their self-destructive ways. And just because of you know who I am, I'm not uh, like a real fan of the game. Like, obviously, for me, it's generational too. my dad going to games with my nieces and nephew and playing ball in the backyard, like all that. That's why we love this sport. But you know what? You know, that just because baseball has been that, we cannot also let them take advantage of where baseball lives in our hearts and take advantage of us because of it. So, I mean, the way that you can speak in this stupid-ass country is with dollars, and that's all these people care about. Mm -hmm. They don't care about you. They don't care about if you're happy or sad, they just want your money um, and and they want your loyalty. And that's it. That's all they care about. And, you know, they've fooled people for far too long into thinking, or I shouldn't say that. I will say that what has 
to me what is like what's it morphed into of these kind of like um what the sport has morphed into into well it's it's a business and the advanced stats and and all that stuff and you, you maybe some baseball fans that are, are you know more of like a you know not fair weather but maybe a casual fan they see all these stat guys and that's what baseball fandom is uh, you know runner run scoring probabilities and yeah. uh, you know and that bores them as opposed to pumping up what what the heyday of baseball you know what do you think of like well you think of like the whole all the way up until maybe the 80s <laughs> you know what i mean like maybe even 70s it started going down a little bit you know but you got they pumped up their heroes now they don't do that they fight against the heroes rob manfred calls the players greedy rob man the owners are fighting the players and like there's all and that was always the case but the heroes were what the sport was about and now it's about just freaking math and it's boring and it and it's and it's about money and it's and it just and it mirrors our society just like baseball always has yeah so right um you know so i'm just kind of i'm kind of looking at it and i think it does survive but you know it could be uh, end up being a very niche kind of sport, like uh, you know rugby. I was going to say, know? yeah, <laughs> rugby. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, think... thinking, I was watching some rugby the other day because, like Australia, they don't have the Rona right now because they have a competent leader, mm, and right. um, so that, or maybe it was New Zealand I was watching. I don't know. They also have a competent leader. Anyway, <laughs> they 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 were playing rugby, and I was like, I don't understand this at all. But I was like, well, maybe. I'll get into rugby if I watch enough of this or like, or if I'm sitting with like my, my niece sometime and she starts loving rugby, you know, that I'm like, Hey, this is something we could do together. Let's watch rugby. Totally. And then baseball will lose me. Even totally. me who like does a million things surrounding cub fandom and baseball and talking about it constantly. It's a great sport, but you know, and it's, and but I'm totally agree with you. I was going to say, and I just, Go ahead, go ahead. I would like to see. I, I'm just going to say one last thing. Uh, I've been I've enjoyed watching baseball in other places a lot more than Major League Baseball through the last recent years. Like I went down to the Caribbean World Series this mm-hmm. last year. I was lucky That's enough to awesome. see ball games in January. That's that is awesome. a country versus country. Great brand of, brand of baseball. The fans in the stands were live. Lots of music. Lots of life. Great times. Um, I've been watching the CPBL in China. Same thing. I've been watching on TV. I can't wait to go to Taiwan someday when they let us in their beautiful, clean country and to watch some of their baseball. But it's it's you know, it's a different brand. And you know what? At Major League Baseball, as the top stewards of this game, they better be careful because like the people who really love it, like me, are going to be like, well, the Major League Baseball, I used to like that. But now I like this baseball XLB or like, you know, uh, you know, and and so and, and eventually maybe some of these other leagues can start offering some real contracts mm-hmm. and getting some of these dudes to not want to play major league baseball because it's fallen so far behind. Right. I haven't in a long time, but uh, when I was coming out of high school, I used to watch a lot of NPB in Japan. Uh, let's go Oryx Buffaloes. But yeah, like uh, I was, I was super into that. And it's so interesting because like you say, like it is almost seen like it's definitely a game and it's definitely a sport, but it's almost like a party. You know, like, it's so much fun. They've got the chance. They've got the flags. They've got all the posters and everything. And then to your other point, you mentioned about, like, the heroes of baseball. I was telling Artie this right before he came on. Like, it's so weird to me how in today's game, let's say the season went on totally as normal this year. Just about every single team has at least one guy on their team that's an absolute superstar. That's a marketable, awesome player at the top of his game, right? Almost every single team has at least one of those guys. Some teams have two, some teams have three, some teams have more, right? But most people, and you can call me out if you guys think I'm wrong, but I would argue that most people that consider themselves just the average Joe Schmo sports fan don't know that much about Mike Trout or about Clayton Kershaw or Nolan Arnato or Anthony Rizzo, despite these guys being at least in the conversation as some of the greatest to ever play the game, and I wonder if that's a failing on baseball to market their talent instead of saying, hey, here's a bunch of new whatever rules. Like, let's see if these work. Good luck. You can instead say, hey, you should watch our sport because this is the 
history of the game. Like these are literally some of the best ever that you're watching play right now. Don't miss out because you will never see talent like this again. Well, uh, Cormac, that's that's a great point, and in fact, that's even a great uh, parallel to to wrestling because a lot of the casual uh, general public does know who the rock is because of he transitioned to movies and you know but maybe not a lot of people knew who john cena is sure yeah that's a, actually a really really good uh comparison because i think it took me up. five years to know that they were even the same person <laughs> <laughs> because I, I don't even watch i didn't watch movies or wrestling but then all of a sudden you know it's, people get so famous that they're undeniable yeah, and uh, I didn't know John Cena and The Rock were the same person well, because I didn't know either of the things well, they were the, doing. The, not that's the, the, the same person, but The Rock has been much bigger. But the WWE kind of failed to make John Cena the household name as as The Rock is or Dwayne Johnson, you know, in mm-hmm. with it with his movies. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. they are. Oh, they are different people. They're, they are different people, right? Different, oh, okay. But John, but John Cena oh, yeah. should Dwayne have been Johnson. The, that Dwayne Johnson is The Rock. Is The Rock? Yes. Correct. That's yes. that's what I was thinking. Dwayne right. Johnson uh, and The Rock. That's but thank that, you for that. That is the same person. Yeah, but John Cena See, so should have been the second person. Yeah. Nobody knows who John Cena is, despite him being one of like the legends of the industry. Right. Exactly. It proves your point. Yeah, but yeah, but Dwayne, but I, and I don't know who Dwayne Johnson is either. I just know The Rock. <laughs> yep. Yep. So yeah, exactly. so that is exactly and and The Undertaker. I know that guy. <laughs> of course. Yeah, because he's 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 been making the news uh, a lot lately. Uh, you know, it's funny, uh, Danny, that you mentioned. I was going to go back. You mentioned the uh, uh, the rugby, and and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think there are some rugby leagues uh, that sell advertisements on their uniforms. And MLB has been talking about that. Uh, it's it's crazy that you mentioned that because I know that there's like soccer leagues that have done that too. And and it's like, who is this team? Or is this you know BF Goodrich team, or is this you know, New South Wales. <laughs> huh. you know? Yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, they got to do what they got to do. I don't really care about that so much. Mm-hmm. It, it, if they, but they can't claim to be some like. They, they already can't claim it. They, they can't claim to be some like traditional, like long-standing. You know, yeah. n- you know. Uh, well, it ends up actually just looking stodgy. But they put that big old Nike swoosh on the front of the the jersey this year. Yeah. Yes. Which I felt was like, you know pretty ugly and just from a aesthetic standpoint so i was like well yeah, i don't know it seems like you just sold that out to the highest bidder there mm-hmm. you know like, like nike that was a negotiation like we don't want to go on the sleeve we want to go right up there on their chest yeah and it is a different thing that you know when you put it on the chest and like you know they get they get mad about the the uh ben zobris pf flyers right. they get mad at, you know they get mad about all all sorts of junk uh that is cool you know that that you know oh those are those batting gloves are too blue or those that arm sleeve is too yellow or you can't wear flags <laughs> all this garbage where you're trying where these dudes are trying to stand out and uh, I know there's still even teams that don't allow facial hair um, so I mean whatever if they want to be that stodgy sort of like I guess you know old fashioned you know I don't like it I think it's a mistake patriarchal. I think would be a good way to describe it or patriarchal. I don't think I had needed the extra arc in the middle of there, but, <laughs> but uh, that's what happens after a couple of trulies. Um, so I, I don't know. It just, I, I feel like if you're, if you're just going to throw an, I mean, why, what is a Nike swoosh? That's an ad. Yeah. So mm-hmm. why not more ads? If, if money's your issue, like that's all they care about. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's all they think about. Like, oh, we can't get fans in there, so we're going to pay you half. And they're like – and now that was even a lie. You can't believe a word these guys say. They're just always trying to get the most money as a negotiator, and that's all they care about. Everything they, – they're Ayn Rand disciples. You know, greed is good. Atlas shrugged, all that garbage. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so, so it's true. amazing. Yeah, and, and and they're they're trying to have it. You know, you've mentioned it many times. They're trying to have it both ways. It's they're they're they they want to make money, but then they you know, like you say, cry poor and like, oh, this is just a hobby. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Liars. Lies. I mean, come on. Like, all right. Let. I, not. I've never done this, but like, I'm sure there's been times where you've tried 
or or maybe I have, you know, where you've tried to be like, oh, I don't really have any money right now, uh, so I can't really go to that dinner. And you know full well that the person that you're saying that to is like, don't worry, man, I got you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, you got to get somebody to pay for something. Totally. Like it's it's like that's what they're doing, except for in like this really large scale way. So it's just kind of funny, you know, or like, uh, you know, my my old bandmate would get out of a cab and he just would always be on the phone, like walking down the street as I paid uh, me and like two other people are splitting the bill in the back. He's like, don't worry, I'll, I'll get the way home. And then he'd leave early and take the subway, you know, kind of guy. Classic wrestler move right there, man. I'll tell you what, classic <laughs> wrestling move. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And, and I think wrestling is probably pretty good because it is, it, you know, it is all about the characters or, or, or as you or sometimes they can be really good by making it all about the characters. Like I was telling you about like 1980s Hulk Hogan and, yeah. you know, all those dudes or they had uh, refrigerator Perry come oh, into yeah. that one Oops. battle Royal and stuff. So or... like they just got wild and they made it crazy and people were like, wrestling's fake. And you're like, of course it is. Look what they're doing. <laughs> you know, like, but, you know, then that was the controversy and that was a lot of fun, too. And, you know, and it's just when they get stodgy and they get away from the theatricality and what they forget that it's fun is what yes. they do. Right. It is. It does take athletic ability, but sports are supposed to be entertainment and they're supposed to be fun uh, for everybody, the players and the the, the fans. Right. Yeah, imagine being a baseball player and being paid millions of dollars to play a sport that is literally fun for you and fun for children, and you're inspiring kids every single time you take the field to go do the same thing and to aspire that, and you get yelled at because your uh, shoes are a little bit too flashy. Like, that is exactly what I... Oh, man, I cannot possibly agree with you any any more than I do. Like, I think that that is the kind of stuff... Like, that's the thing that, that baseball get all up in arms about, but uh, they won't care that they're losing half of their gate every... Or they're losing, like, 10% of their gate every year... And, and they just care more about, oh, making sure the tradition of the game is still there. And it's like, what it, what about the tradition of the game is that great to you guys? Like, the tradition of the game in 1860, this does not exist anymore. Like, do you mean from the 80s? Like, what's the golden age that you guys are so, like, bereft to fucking lose? I don't know half, if bereft to word. Half the owners are mad black people can play in it. Yeah. Still, <laughs> probably. <laughs> you know, I mean, Please. seriously. Just a couple years ago, Phyllis Schlafly, one of the biggest sponsors of the Cardinals, was going out there. Nobody condemned except for, well, I mean, people. Nobody from the Cardinals condemned Phyllis Schlafly for her saying all this garbage about, um, uh, it, you know, oh, it should only be Americans playing in this game. They should get all the foreigners. Like, basically, like, you know, the, the foreign players are ruining my sport. And you can even go back to Marge Schott in her plantation. Marge Schott was who I immediately thought of, too. Yeah, I mean, in her ass, I mean, and now she's got some foundation and blah, blah, blah. But we're talking a city like right on the Mason-Dixon line with like a half white, half black, you know, it, you know, and she was just a she was a racist, a she terrible never, racist. And so are and I think so are probably uh, I mean, we know about the Cubs owners and their involvement with the Trumps and uh, and daddy's racist emails that, that those all got passed around and embarrassed the Cubs fans and their family. And and, you know, enough of this stuff happens. And that's what I'm saying. I am personally here to watch it burn and be entertained by baseball at the same time. So it actually <laughs> yeah. works out great because if, if, I, if I get a little baseball out of watching it burn. You know, then fine, but because baseball will exist, it's live and alive and well in the Caribbean, it's alive and well in Venezuela, it's alive and well in the Dominican, it's alive and well in lots of places, and that style of baseball has permeated, I think, the Major League Baseball enough to where your younger fan, if MLB ever gets an interest in. Uh, courting that fan, which they don't seem to yet. They're still, I guess, they're going to separate the baby boomers from their money with, like, you know, fake Mickey Mantle autograph day first, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then um, and then when they're all dead from Corona, then, uh, then uh, maybe they'll start to listen to us. And I'm not young either. Like, I'm, you know, those are like my parents. Like, I'm just one generation. I'm an Xer, Generation X. Sure. We don't give a fuck about baseball. We don't give a fuck about anything. Sorry if I'm not allowed to say the oh, no. F word. No, this is <laughs> okay. no. We're we're an explicit podcast. podcast. Oh, thank God! Right. It's I've been holding back. It's wrestling after all. I've been holding, but I don't <laughs> think they've ever. I've never thought they cared about me. 
I cared about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now I look at it, I'm like, well, it used to cost four dollars and now it costs a hundred. So now I'm making that calculation. How much do I care about it? Because they certainly don't care about me. And I'm seeing that, you know, and anything that was ever entertaining that, you know, like bat flips. I mean, you know, even if it becomes a thing in the major leagues that if you bat flip on me or if you bat flip on that guy, you better be ready to take one in the ear. If that's the narrative, like I'm still there to watch all that, you know, not that people should be throwing at each other. But, yeah. you know, because bat flips are actually just harmless fun, whereas throwing a baseball 100 miles per hour in somebody's head is deadly. Oh, which So it's like a little bit of a false equivalency there, so pitcher like, man. You're a guy right now. I've never met you before, but you are my dude. Like, I, <laughs> I'm so there with you. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just kind of like, I'm looking at it and I'm just kind of like, let's see. I'm interested to see what they do because I think they're out of touch. So I think they'll fail, but I'm still here to, to be entertained by the failure and, and I'll continue watch to watch. Burn. Yeah. Watch it burning. Like I am definitely going to uh, sign up for some, because it's at least on this side of the world when the winter leagues do happen, probably without a hitch mm. down in the Caribbean. I, and hopefully I can actually get down to Puerto Rico this winter. Uh, I've been texting my friend, Jose, you know, Jose already. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I've been like, Hey, he lives down in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico I'm like as a looking down there are people like acting right and he's like not really but you know it's not so bad and, you know because you know anyway I, we don't know yet obviously we're way far away from winter right now but um, but that style of baseball that brand of baseball the way that they play it down there is a lot of fun and it's a great day at the ballpark and it reminds me of being a kid at the ballpark which was the entire point of me going to Wrigley Field again as an adult Tell I used to feel like a kid again, and I oh, I don't feel that way at Wrigley Field. I just feel like kind of a drunken fat mook, <laughs> you know, who like you know is like uh, you know just aggressive and you know it's it's not it, it I don't feel the same. I I I like the other brand more, so you know I you know, they may they may lose me. I think right. the World Baseball Classic is a really good example of that, actually. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Like, I think yeah. the World Baseball Classic is fantastic, and I'm glad that they did it, and I hope they keep doing it. Because it's kind of outlining exactly what you're talking about, where you see all these younger guys on Team you know, Puerto Rico or a Team Dominican Republic or whatever, just like going out there and having fun. And then you watch some of the guys on Team USA, some of the you know kind of more old school guys who are very particular about the way they – you know, throw the ball and the way they bat and the way they play the game. And it's just so different. And it's like, you can see the energy is different between the two teams or the, you know, how many teams there were in there. And so, you know, I'm a huge uh, world baseball classic guy for those reasons. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you, like, who did you, I remember the, the final was uh team Puerto Rico, I believe. Was it? Yeah, it was Puerto Rico versus uh america or usa in the final the last time uh who did you go for i like team usa just because i like i love nolan arenado but if team puerto rico won i would have no problem with that i just thought i thought the concept was so novel and so cool i didn't really even care who won i just thought it was a really cool thing they did and i would love to see more of that like uh and and usa would dominate for for certain i you know they probably they've got more players than they need but you know, I would love to, you know, be a fan of, you know, team. I mean, Dominican could definitely give the USA a run for their money. Yeah. And the thing is, did it? I mean, some countries kind of cheated that situation. Like, like if you're like great, great grandmother was Jewish, you could play for Team Israel. Right. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> they don't play baseball in Israel. It's like, come on. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But they did have a fun mascot. Um, but yeah, more of that. But more more of that, though. You know, absolutely more of the I, I love the the country competition. I saw that in the, the Caribbean World Series this year, and it was so much fun to watch. Like a lot of people came into Puerto Rico from uh, the Dominican. And so like one side of the stadium was fans of this team and one side was fans of the other. But you know what? Everybody was playing music. Everybody was dancing. Everybody was having a great time together. And they watched a ball game and, and, and just had a blast blowing whistles and dancing in the streets afterwards for all night long. It was a big carnival. I was going to say, it was like a carnival. 
Yeah, it was beautiful. And in fact, there was a carnival next door, a literal <laughs> carnival, which you had, to, you had to pay more to get into that. But um, but anyway, it was, it, you know, it's just great. And uh, and even, you know, there's other places and, uh, you know, like in the like you said, Korea, I saw a bunch of a Korean bat flip video that was going around on the, the interweb the other day. I was like, this is amazing. These bat flips are epic. You know, like it's an art form. You know, really I'm is. like, why can't we have that? And they're like, no, because blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, nah, you just put the Nike swish on the front. So, like, you pretty much lost all credibility as That's far so- as, like, we're keeping it, you know, you know, traditional. My ass. You right. know, we got video boards. We got, you know, everything sponsored by somebody. I mean, Strike 2 is sponsored by a bank on the radio broadcast. Mm. So I don't, I don't want to hear about it, about yeah. how you're traditional, you know. If they want to make it traditional, then you should have to take a swig of beer on third base like they used to do. I would watch that. <laughs> exactly. I would watch the hell out of that. Exactly. And so, and they don't, you know, we talked about it on another show that I'm on about uh, how on the, during the uh, All-Star Week, you know, they've got the home run derby, but they should have like running bases competitions and trying to steal that. second base and who's got the okay. best arm as a catcher and like, you know, timing runners. And I, I don't know. There's they they leave so much on the table with their lack of creativity. It is sickening. Yeah. Well, you know, and I want to kind of piggyback on that because the minor league uh, teams, I felt, you know, before they were all like 42 of them, Jackie Robinson would be very disappointed. We're axed. But mm. uh, um, when I went to a lot of them, like in our area, we had the uh, Colorado Sci Sox and now the uh, Rocky Mountain Vibes. Uh, they seem to really get about building a, a fun environment and have just crazy stuff with the mascots. And, and I just wonder if some of these um, major league teams – don't ever visit a minor league park and figure out these weird promotions and craziness that they, they, they have in making it a, a, a fun environment. And, and, you know, we're, they're going to, you, know, we've keep you, Mac, you talked about, and Dan, you talked about on your show that they're losing, they're not courting the, the younger fan. You know, we got the, what was it? Was it 52, 53? What's the average fan they, of baseball? Yeah, older than me, and I'm freaking old. Right, older than you <laughs> and I, Danny. Yep. <laughs> That's just weird to me. I really, I don't, un- I mean, there's a lot of different reasons, right? We've talked about a lot of different, but it's just like, it really just ends up being, like Danny said multiple times, like, it's just a deal where they refuse to acknowledge the fact that they're out of touch, and they don't know what the fans want to see anymore. Like, and and it's not like, oh, we want to see a runner on second base. Like, that's, no one cares. No one who is not watching baseball is going to start watching baseball because they want to see a runner on second base in the 12th inning. Like, no one cares about that. (laughs) Like you're saying, Artie, I think think you actually make a good point with the minor league teams because I I went to go see the uh, Albuquerque Isotopes once when I uh, was out in Albuquerque for, I think, a show or something, and I had an absolute blast. They've got the Simpsons stuff all over because, you know, Isotopes is the name of Simpsons team, and they've got all kinds of ridiculous, like, they had like a race between like hot dogs or whatever. And it's just like, it's total party. It's so much fun. I didn't know a single person in the stadium. We had a total blast. I saw the worst pitching out I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, homeboy gave up like six runs and like two thirds of the inning. He walked like four people. It was brutal, but I didn't care because you were just having a great time while you were there. And I, and I don't, I don't know why they refuse to lean into that. There's so many exciting young players. Um, uh, Danny mentioned bat flips, Tim Anderson, Tim Anderson should be a guy that you build around. Like, he is so much fun to mm-hmm. watch, so talented. He is such a great player. He's so exciting and so energetic. And they hate him. They hate the idea that he's different and that he wants to just have fun. I don't understand. I will never understand it. Yeah. Well, Sammy Sosa. Sammy it, Sosa. It, yeah, yep. and another example. I mean, it, you know, not necessary. I mean, not I mean, he's kind of an egomaniac, so I could see people not liking him. But uh, and the cheating, of course, the cheating (laughs) and the cheating. cheating. But and so like people that could have a a good reason to not like him. But either way, like they never uh, necessarily celebrated. They didn't even know it was only in retrospect that we figured out how much that saved baseball. It wasn't people weren't sitting there at the time saying, oh, my God. Look, baseball's being saved. Like, like nobody said that. They were just like they just found themselves interested in it again because of this. Uh, you know, the home run chase. Uh, 
And then, yeah. yeah, and then in retrospect, we figured that out, and baseball still, like, made Mark McGuire come back with his tail between his legs, even though everybody knew what was going on. You know, Sammy Sosa, same thing, you know. Uh, he's still not back, uh, welcomed into the graces of the Cubs. So, uh, and it's all because of who they are and the personality. And it's this patriarchal, I uh, get back to the billionaire, the billionaire patriarchs who don't step too out of line or otherwise they're going to smack you back into place. Yep. And, uh, you know, they, they do just enough. They do j- just enough to, like, you know, keep you from uh, revolting. <laughs> and that's it, you know, and then they, they screw up and people revolt anyway. And then they, you know, look at Kaepernick, you know, yeah. and get, take another sport. Like now everybody's like, oh, uh, well, like Goodell, it only took him freaking five years or whatever to evolve on the issue, you know, till he was like, oh, my God, black lives do matter. <laughs> and you're like, you idiot. We've been saying this. He did it because of police brutality. It's a problem. They literally have the same weapons that they had in Iraq <laughs> right mm. now. There's issues, dude. That's all he was saying. So not to get political about it, but like these, and it's the same and with those owners. They're out of touch. They're out of touch because they're just rich white dudes yep. sitting up there a million years old. You know, uh, you know, they probably still support Vietnam. And think Vietnam was a good idea. It's like, dude, even that ship has sailed. Everybody knows Vietnam was a mistake, and we lost. He's like, no, it was a good war. McNamara was a good guy, and he knew it. And, you know, <laughs> LBJ all the way. You're like, dude, what are you even talking about? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man, I'm Brother's purple preaching right now. <laughs> I'm purple. I know. I know. I should. I should shut up. There. The, the men in the, the. One time I was playing a gig, and I had a song called KTP, which was sung by a guy, uh, like the character in the song was a dude that was insane. And he, and his plan was to kill the president of the United States. Ah. And, and so that was the song. It was sung from his perspective and it was like a punk song and stuff. And this freaking dude comes and gets in my face and he's just like, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? You know, (laughs) I'm just playing this song. And, uh, he's, he's like, I hope the men in the black suits come for you. And I was like, what? I'm like, yeah, you've, dude, I'm not saying this. You know, I don't even know where the president is. I mean, this is a song. Is a, you know, does it, I don't even know where I was going with this, but hell yeah. But, and, and, but it, all I'm saying is that out of touch, it was an old man. That was where I was going with this. This old man, it was an art gallery. I don't know what the hell this dude was doing there. And I'm like, dude, everybody else gets what I'm doing up here. But you, (laughs) you know, that's where I'm going with this. Like, I'm sorry you don't understand bat flips. I don't start. You don't understand the sarcasm of the youth in this song or like the perspective of the art in this art gallery. But you're in. It was a comedy song, too. It wasn't even it was supposed to be funny. But that's the same thing with bat flips. I'm not trying to show up a picture. I'm trying to entertain the crowd. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? Do you know it's not entertaining watching a man get brained with a baseball? (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and it's it's the same thing we talk about this in in wrestling uh cormac that uh you want to get a reaction because no reaction is worse than you know it, it, it is worse you know than in, like i said no reaction you want to get a reaction good or bad no reaction yes. is is the death the death nail of of your performance it means you're Absolutely. not connecting and it's entertainment. Sports are entertainment, whether it's Absolutely. baseball or, or wrestling. And Cormac, you know that, you know, you, you get reactions from even me, you know, I wouldn't have even holding up a freaking sign at milestone for you. If you aren't <laughs> getting a reaction, you know, cause you're the best, but no, you're spot on, man. Like, like you're saying like if, okay, so what happens? Let's say you're watching a white Sox game and they're playing the Cubs and Anderson hits a home run and he throws his bat in the air. White Sox fans are cheering and Cubs fans are booing, right? There's yeah. fan interaction. They're invested in the moment. What yeah. happens comes up to the bat next? Uh, the pitcher for the Cubs, I'm not going to name names. I don't think they'd do it. But they throw and they hit him in the head, and he hits the ground. Silence. Lack, lackey would do it. Lack, like, yeah, lackey, lackey, doesn't, would, yeah. lackey would absolutely do it. I don't, I don't think the Cubs, maybe, Le, I don't even think John Lester would do it. He might pitch him inside. Sure. But, but I, don't way, think, even Lester, I don't think he'd headhunt. He gets one even gets away from him, whatever, and he gets him in the shoulder, and Anderson hits the ground. What does the crowd do? They go silent. Silent. Because they're like, yep. oh shit. 
Like, yeah. we don't want to see a guy get hurt. As much as yeah. we'd like to see his quote-unquote comeuppance, we don't want to see a guy get hurt. Now, the fun has been taken out of the moment. And what always happens? you got to wait until the crowd settles again. He gets up. He walks at first, kind of tepid claps. Like, okay, I'm glad you're all right. But, Jesus, that was terrifying. Like, the, the vibe of the game is now completely lost. And it's going to take a half inning to get back. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm so with you, man. Just let the guys play. Let them have fun. Let them throw their bats around. Like, who gives a shit? Like, it's just a game. Yeah. And let them wear arm sleeves and, and individualize themselves in whichever way they want to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and if, and, you know, you can have some rules and regulations. Like, you, you, you don't necessarily need to, like, make it a clown show all of a sudden. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, the little things that the guys have fought for and, and been told no about is just, you know, come on. Holy. You're. Man. You know, oh, is, you can't wear old fashioned shoes. <laughs> you know, yeah, whatever. That's what, those are. It's, you know, but Michael Jordan faced that, too. I remember in the 80s where they, they didn't they said his his black and red shoes didn't have enough of the color white in it because that was I don't know why that was one of the, the things or, or or something like or did it had too much red or too much of one thing. So they've you know, they've all been like this forever. And. Now, basketball, I think, is a sport that actually has done quite a good job. I said I'm not a basketball fan, but, you know, they seem to really market their players very well. Yes. You know, they, uh, you know, I don't know how football is looking uh, right now, but it seems to be more popular than baseball is. So, yep. Yeah, it's take, it definitely taken over. So, well, I've beaten that dead horse. Like, now I'm exhausted, guys. I'm, I just <laughs> I, I got to gotta go take a nap. Uh, just yelling. Just yelling. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Well, uh, that's great. I, you know, I, that might be a, a fantastic place to uh, wrap this uh, conversation up. Uh, but Danny, um, tell our listeners um, they want to uh, maybe uh, follow up and tune into a couple episodes of your uh, podcast and everything else yes, that you kind of do. Where would they do that? Well, we're called the Sun Ranto Show, and uh, uh, you can. Uh, you know, you can look that up on iTunes and all that stuff, like every everybody else's show. But um, you can follow me at at Sunranto on Twitter, um, Instagram. I I think I'm something else. I I don't know. Just look me up, Danny Rocket. I got two T's in my last name. Um, I don't know. Google me. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I got, I got a band, the Bleacher Bum Band. You can Bleacherbum dot band. We got an album coming out. We just released a song called Rob Manfred Hates Baseball, which, by the way, already I'll send you a copy of. You can put it on this show if you want to. Oh, Do that'd it. Be, that'd be, yeah, it'd be awesome. I'd love to play it. All right, cool. So I'll, I'll send I'll send you a copy of that if, if, if you haven't already purchased it. Nice. <laughs> I'll pr- already, I'll- already start sweating. I know. <laughs> put, put, put me on the spot, you know, calling me out, as they would say in the wrestling no, business. No, no. <laughs> I, 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 I owe you a favor anyway. And uh, so, no, I'd, I'll definitely send that over to, to you. No problem. All right. Well, and uh, Cormac, remind the people what they can uh, do to follow you there on all the uh, social media. For sure, Ski. So, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. PayPal, Venmo, if you guys are feeling generous, it's all at Cormac Battle Pro, C O R M A C Battle Pro. Hit me up, follow me, let's, you know, talk or whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Danny, Mac, I do appreciate you guys coming on to this edition of uh, RMP Radio, and uh, we'll uh, talk in the future. Totes. Thanks, yeah. man. Thank you. Once again, a big thank you to Cormac Battle and Danny Rocket for coming on to this edition of RMP Radio and uh, starting off with uh, wrestling and went into baseball and got back into wrestling and just did a little bit of a roller coaster and brought it all around in a nice little circle. Uh, Check uh, Danny out on his uh, Sun Ranto show. uh, Great for your uh, Chicago Cubs uh, fans that may be listening to this. And may may I say, even baseball fans in general, because as we know, there hasn't been much team-specific information to talk about uh, this season. And uh, they've been talking about just the general baseball stuff that's kind of been happening as well. And uh, it's definitely a listen to. I listen to each and every single uh, episode when it comes out. And, of course, uh, let's give some uh, love to uh, Cormac and uh, follow him out there on all the uh, social media, Cormac Battle Pro. 
All right. Well, uh, before we get out of here, uh, let's uh, pay some bills like they used to say uh, back in the day. Uh, you want to get some uh, merchandise of your uh, favorite uh, Rocky Mountain Pro superstars, such as uh, Cormac Battle. Uh, head over to rmpwrestling.com. Click on the merchandise link. And, or if you're in your uh, Amazon uh, website or Amazon app, uh, search for uh, Rocky Mountain Pro and you'll be able to uh, find all those uh, great choices there. Uh, well, okay, upcoming events. Not yet, but a little birdie told me there could be a little rumble happening uh, soon with uh, Rocky Mountain Pro. Uh, they've uh, recently got back into uh, training their... Uh, New uh, training facility in uh, Denver looks like a fantastic uh, facility, and I hope to uh, visit there uh, real soon and and, and check it out. Looks uh, like uh, got all the students getting back into that uh, wrestling shape, so uh, hopefully soon. Hope you guys are all excited. In the meantime, you want to watch us, uh, you can uh, watch our uh, episodes on the uh, twitch.tv slash Rocky Mountain Pro uh, if you guys are a uh, Amazon Prime subscriber, you can get your subscription to it uh, free just by uh, logging into there and uh, with your Amazon credentials and giving us the subscription. We definitely appreciate it. You can also watch all of our uh, shows, uh, charge episodes, and past catalog, of course, at uh, on the Fight TV app, uh, website, and so on. Uh, youtube.com slash Rocky Mountain Pro lots of great content there as well as you can also find us on the impact plus uh, dot TV uh, service as well you want to follow us everything does stem from the website at uh, rmpwrestling.com and on the social medias of the Facebook the Twitter the Instagram all with the name of the Rocky MTN Pro and once again I'll phonetically spell that for you that is the Rocky Mike Tango November Pro. And I want to thank you all for listening and uh, supporting to, uh, RMP Radio, where pro wrestling is elevated. Rob Manfred likes opening days in winter. Likes baseball games that don't go on too long. Rob Manfred likes more offense from the hitter. Likes juicing up the ball and hitting dogs. Intentional walks with just a finger. And old umpires who are always blowing calls. Likes a National League DH. But one thing Manfred hates. Rob Manfred hates baseball. Rob Manfred likes a pitch clock for the pitches. Listening the ball drag with lower stitches And half the teams making the playoffs Rob Manfred likes pitchers who face three batters And not paying minor leaguers at all Likes to catch the block the plate But one thing Manfred hates Rob Manfred hates baseball Houston Astros cheat. He likes how ticket prices keep the fans out. And exiting teams out.